Hey guys, Ethan here from Terminal.com and today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, SSH keys and use them to access your terminals remotely. For this tutorial, I'm going to be pulling a lot of information from the blog post we did on SSH keys and how to set them up. Uh, I'll include a link to this in the description to the film. Feel free to jump over there if you like. There's a lot of good information in this. Uh, can really speed up the process for you. If you're a beginner, don't worry about it. I'm going to do this from a base of zero, so you should be able to follow along with me just fine. Uh, if you've got more experience and a lot of this information is not new to you, bear with me. We'll be to the terminal specific or terminal.com specific information in just a minute. All right, so starting from a base of zero, uh, the first thing I want to do is open up the command line for my local machine. Uh, and you can see I've got that here. And I'm going to use it to generate a uh, key pair. So we do that using the command ssh keygen rsa. Now, these keys, they come in pairs. There is a public and a private key. The public key gets sent out to all the computers that uh, you want to be able to connect to. Your private key should never leave your local machine. That's very important for security reasons. Um, what happens when they when you try to connect is they essentially do an encrypted matchup to ensure that you are who you say you are. Um, and if you're if other people get their hands on your private key, then uh, you know there's really no way of proving that. So. For your own security, you want to keep your hands on your private key and make sure that never leaves your local machine. Now it's going to ask us uh, to enter a file path in which we would like to save the key. You'll notice that between parentheses here, there is a file path listed. And what that means is that if we don't type anything, it's going to save uh, here. It's going to create this SSH directory and save our keys um, in this folder or in this, in, yeah, in this, SSH, in this SSH directory. So that's what we want. We're just going to hit enter. Asks us for a passphrase, which is essentially like a two-step uh, validation. We don't want to do that, so we're just going to hit enter, enter again, and we're all set. Now, like I said, I'm doing this from a base of zero, so I'm going to come over to my terminal account and just spin up a brand new server for this. I'm going to use a standard Ubuntu 14.04, but you can use whatever you like. Um, and then I'll rename this real quick. We'll just call it something creative like SSH screencast. And I'm going to turn off auto pause and start it. Auto pause is a cool feature. It can save you a lot of money. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to turn it off. So as this starts up, the next thing I want to do is configure uh, my proxy command on my local machine so that it can interface well with terminal.com's proxy. And the quickest way to do this is to come to the blog post and you'll see there's a uh, little snippet here which will show you what to type in. This is going to get typed in on your local machine. But there's something important that you need to, uh, to remember and that's when you're typing this in you need to swap out your actual username for the word username here, and there's two ways to find out what that is. Uh, you can go to the terminal you're trying to connect to. Inside the IDE, look at the URL bar. This is the unique identifier for this particular terminal, and the name that comes before the number is your username. The other way to find this, and this is specifically suited to setting up your SSH settings, uh, is to click on this link here, which will bring you to the Q&A section, uh, which is pretty cool because some of the information here has been uh, customized specifically for your account. So you can see here, I have the very same code snippet as I have in the blog post, uh, but this line has already been customized with my username. So I'm just going to copy this, and we will run this on our local machine and we're all set there. Uh, one important thing to notice, if you decide to type this in rather than copy and paste, this proxy command line is all one line. The whole thing. So don't add any additional white space. You can see here, it, 
because of the width of the blog post, it kind of appears to be two lines, but it's not. It's one line. Uh, so don't add any white space there. Just keep it on the same line. All right, the next thing that we're going to have to do is we want, and you can see this in the article, we want to um, go to our SSH proxy settings and register the SSH key, our public key that we just created. So I'm going to click here, and uh, it may pull up my old keys. So here's this will be a listing of all the keys you've already registered. Uh, and in order to get our public key, we need to view the file that we just created with our public key in it. And before I do that, I'm just going to show you something so that you can, uh, if you're a beginner, you, you stay up to date on what's going on in this process. So as you can see, we are uh, just in the standard user directory for whatever user you're using on the computer. And if I, sorry, I keep typing the wrong command there. If I list all of my directories and files, you'll see this brand new SSH directory. Now I want to look into that SSH directory and I'll list uh, the files inside of it and you'll see a couple of things. When we copy and pasted this code to create our config file, that config file is now inside the SSH directory. Also you'll see this IDRSA and IDRSA.pub and these are your keys. So IDRSA is your private key and IDRSA.pub is your public key. And so what we want to do is we want to take a look at this uh, .pub file and we're going to copy the contents of it and use that in a couple different places. So I'm going to just navigate back to my main user for anybody who wasn't following along specifically with me. And uh, and you want to just use the cat command and type in the path to this ID rsa.pub. And it should open up the file to be able to view the contents. What you want to do is copy the entire file. And it's very important that you do two things. First of all, copy every single character in the file. So you want to get from the very first character to the very last, and you don't want any additional white space. Very important. So copy that, and then you want to come over oops, to the uh, SSH keys settings area of your terminal account. You can find this by clicking the link, or from your standard terminal console, just click on the settings wheel. And uh, you'll notice in the left-hand column is the settings or is the SSH key settings area. Paste your public key here and just name this computer. So we'll call it Mac2. Now the cool thing about this is it will tell you whether or not you've copied the key properly because if you haven't, um, an error message will come up here saying that it's an invalid key. And that's important because you need to make sure you're copying your key properly for the next step which is we want to place a copy of your public key in the authorized keys file on the terminal that you're trying to connect to. So if you've got some experience, you've probably set this up. Uh, if you have no experience, uh, you probably haven't, or if this is a brand new terminal, you probably haven't set this up, and so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick as well. Again, the fastest way is probably just to come right over to the blog post, and you'll see that we have another code snippet here. And all you have to do is just copy this beginning part, the first three commands, and uh, come back over here and paste them. Oh, I always do that. Do not paste them into your URL bar. Paste them into the command line. And uh, then we want to pull up our local terminal, copy our public key once again, and, and, and uh, paste it. Here as well and then just end the file by typing EOF and we're squared away there. So let me just refresh this real quick. We're going to need it. Uh, so you've seen basically what we did was we generated a key pair. We set up the config file that tells our computer how to interact with terminal.com. We registered our public key in the SSH keys section and we put a copy of our public key 
on the actual terminal itself. And you'll see that if I uh, list the directories here, we just created this SSH directory using those commands I showed you. And if we check it out, you will also see uh, that authorized keys document that we created up here. So if you're following along with me step for step, you should be all squared away. And the next thing to do is just to um, go ahead and make the SSH connection. So we're going to try this from our terminal. Again, make sure you're using, or rather from our local machine. Go ahead and type SSH, and then we want the user, so root at, and we want the unique identifying URL of the terminal you're trying to connect to. So in this case, it's ethanbrooks57.terminal.com. So ethanbrooks57.terminal. Dot com. Now it should ask us a couple of questions. All right, that looks good. Uh, we will type yes because we would like to continue connecting. It may ask us one more question. And this can take a few seconds. Yes. Perfect. And now you'll see we have connected to the command line of our remote terminal. And again, just, you know, uh, we could list the um, oops, directories here. And you should see, so uh, you should see our authorized keys document, which is right here. So we are we're working the command line of our remote terminal. Guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Oh, one last step. Um, you can exit out uh, if you, you know, if you wish to get back to your local machine's command line, just type exit, then you're all set to go. I hope this was helpful, guys. Uh, feel free to comment, let us know what you'd like to see, and definitely check in next time. Take care.